So and you're gonna you're gonna notice right away it's got very stuff. It's Ghost Riders in the Sky. You know that song, right? Yeah. Yeah. That is extremely unenthusiastic. You know that song, right? So here's what we'll all do. Uh, right in the middle, we'll all sing a chorus together. Okay? It'll be really fun. I'm really satisfied. song that I did at the, up at the house concert that he saw, he asked me to do it tonight, and I'm, I'm real tickled that he asked, because it's one of my favorite songs, and there's a nice little story that goes with it, since I'm at a storytelling festival, I'm going to tell you a story. So in 2007, I got into the, two, the Tucson Folk Festival uh, songwriting competition as a finalist, and one of the things that they do at the festivals is they uh, they set up peripheral gigs for the for the finalists that get in the competition because you're not getting paid to be there. So to help you offset offset travel costs, they set up these peripheral gigs. And in Tucson, for that folk festival, most of the guys running the folk festival are school teachers, and so uh, they set these peripheral gigs up for us in the in the schools. And I got down there on the Friday morning of the festival weekend, and I went to my appointed school. And I knew I was going to be playing for um, high schoolers. 
And so I got there and I got out of the van and I had my guitar case in my hand and I headed toward the administration building. And as I did that, out from the administration building came a woman who I learned was the principal of the school. And she, she came up and she didn't even introduce herself. She just figured I was the guy and I had the guitar case in my hand. And she was shaking a stack of papers like this. And she's going, your lyrics, your lyrics, they're inappropriate. And I, I was going, wow, I'm just a folk singer. I didn't know, how, how could they even, well, there are, there are people in the world that think folk singers can be very inappropriate at times. But anyway, I didn't think I was that dangerous, you know. So I started talking to her because I did have traffic costs offset and I didn't want to lose the gig, you know. So, so uh, it didn't take very long in this conversation to realize that I was not playing for high schoolers. I was playing for first and second graders. <laughs> And I still didn't know why that made my lyrics inappropriate, but she was absolutely convinced of it. So, so I, I just worked with her, you know, and I started pulling songs out of my bucket of songs, and I had to reach pretty deep down to the bottom because I was I had to come up with songs for, you know, first and second graders. And I pulled this next song out. It's called The Rubber Band Song. And I hadn't played it in a number of years. I wrote it back in the late 90s and I, it had just fallen out of my repertoire. And so I pulled it out for these kids because I knew it would be very appropriate for them. I had such a great time with the kids playing it that it actually kind of worked its way back into my repertoire and stayed there. And now it's the lead off track of my latest CD. So I love that. I love those independent lives that songs live and you know, all by themselves. So here it is called Rubber Band Song. is it all about? Millions and billions of people just can't figure it out. Love's the only reason I can't think of nothing else. Life is a celebration, so decorate yourself. Ooh, but there's no way to love without losing your heart. It's gonna happen anyway.
Thank you. Thank you very much.